What's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set your high pass filter. Your high pass or your low cut is possibly one of the most important tools that you have on your console. Some consoles have a high pass on it, but it's just set at like something 80 hertz or something like that. And it's just a button that you turn off and on. But this gets really powerful whenever you can adjust it freely. So like on the X32, you can put your high pass, I think it goes all the way up to 400 hertz that you can sweep up and down. So that's a lot more useful than just the button at 80. But the point of the high pass shouldn't be, in my opinion, to really start changing tone, but instead it should be to just remove what you don't need. Usually just like sub lows, rumble, the air, just noise that isn't really a part of the instrument, but is more like a byproduct of the instrument. You know, if it's like the amp cabinet rumbling, or if it's the toms picking up too much of the kick drum, you know, the overheads picking up too much of the low end from the toms and the kick drum, things like that. I would say high pass everything on the board except for kick, bass, keyboard, synth bass, things like that, that you kind of want that rich low end to happen. But even on those, a lot of times you can even high pass those things a little bit to clean up the things you don't need. My one big tip for setting your high pass to slowly turn it up until you start losing the information that you want in your signal. It's that simple. Turn it up until you really start noticing it. Otherwise, it's just there to take away the noise. So let's jump to the board real quick and I'll show you just a few examples of how to set your high pass. So let's take a look at this uh, snare drum here. Typically, if I were to make a preset, um, I would set this at 100 and just start there. But what I wanna show you is how you can roll the high pass up to the point that you feel like you start losing information and that kind of be your set point. So let's do that real quick. I'll just play these drums and we'll do that. So I'll bring it down. So you can see you're not really hearing anything down there. I feel like it starts losing it. So really there's not much going on in the lows there. Now, at the same time though, on subs, on a big system, you would start hearing a lot of noise and just rumble. There wouldn't be much tone, like you can see even on the RTA meter, not, not much is happening. But as soon as you started introducing a lot of other things into the mix that have little bits of information happening down low and it's all being fed into your big subs, you're going to start having problems. So this is how I set a uh, high pass on a snare. I'll just roll it up until the point that I feel like it starts losing stuff and stop there so that the snare is not being affected, only the stuff that's happening around the snare. So let's jump over to a vocal real quick. So you can see that vocal is super muddy. There's, there's nothing on, except it's still being fed to some reverb, but uh, nothing else is happening. So let's dial in this high pass and go from there. Okay, the reason I stopped there, if I started cranking up even farther, yes, the vocal started getting more clear, but it's because we're starting to cut things out of the vocal that may be notes, that may be uh, tone, all that. So at that point, that's when I would bring in this low shelf to deal with the uh, clarity issue, and we'll go into that in more detail in another video. But that is how I would set the high pass on this one. So if I turn this EQ and compressor on, Over 
So that's how I would set a high pass on a snare drum and a vocal, and the same principles apply to everything else on the board. So I hope that's been helpful. Hit the link in the description for the reverb cheat sheet, and uh, do all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.